It is a rhetorical question, Libs, because come to think of it, why should I have to ask the question in the first place? What is the value of the Nigerian life? Every day we hear of killings, kidnappings, fatal motor accidents and so on, with hardly a word from our government. Even if they do say something, it's usually to utter empty mechanical words such as, no stone will be left unturned to bring the perpetrators to book. How many times have we heard that and how many times have the perpetrators been brought to book? Hardly ever, if at all. Instead, we have a senator sponsoring a bill to create an agency to rehabilitate and absorb repentant Boko Haram members back into society and worse, back into our army. Nigerians lose their lives every day plying our terrible roads, yet nothing is done about those very roads. Relatives and friends cry and mourn, but soon move on as they know, just as the rest of us do, that no amount of tears will move the government to action. It is each man for himself. Never have we known the level of kidnappings we're experiencing today. Some roads are no longer viable as they have been taken over by bandits, herdsmen and armed robbers, rather than deploy more security personnel and measures to protect citizens. The opposite is the case. Our security personnel are usually nowhere to be seen at the hotspots, leaving vulnerable Nigerians at the mercy of terrorists. We can all remember the Otedola Bridge explosion, which happened in June 2018, that claimed lives. Yet, tankers that are usually not roadworthy still continue to transport PMS across the country during rush hour. Very little investment is made in our education, housing or health sector, and it shows. Most of our public schools and hospitals are so dilapidated and ill-equipped for purpose, fake drugs flood our markets, and no provisions made for affordable housing. The average Nigerian is aware that if they rely on the government for anything, they're on a long thing. We know that the fact that we're alive today is only down to God's mercy. We have no assurance of security from our government. If we complain publicly, we may be disposed of or taken into custody by security operatives. Yet every four years, we trek to the polls and cast our votes for the very same people who place no value on the Nigerian life. Some of us even selling our vote for as little as 2,000 Naira. So what do we do? We have two options. We can either continue along this path or start voting the right people in and holding them accountable. Get to know our rights and fight for them. After all, what value is a life without security and freedom? What value is a life without security? Yes, um, no matter how, how attractive the return on investment are in your country, if there is no security, nobody will put a cobble there. Exactly. Nobody will put a dime. In that and, and and unfortunately um, I always say this we are very religious now we leave everything to God live and for God um, you you're traveling on the road you are attacked by arm robbers there is no police like you said there are no, even when the police come who's protecting the police that is protecting you <laughs> the salary is not secure mm -hmm. the army man salary is not secure but yet government are buying cars foreign cars they are Nobody's discussing their salaries and allowances. Mm -mm. And yet you're talking about immunity for them. We talk about, uh, we, we fight ourselves for even calling government to action. They say it's hate speech. Now you're talking of, don't even talk again. It's hate speech. Something had to give. My own is not whether we continue or whether we vote them. They should know as a matter of fact that if we continue on this trajectory, mm. very soon, soon and very soon, that Liberia, when they were telling Liberia, no, don't do this. Some chief judges would give uh, order and think that because you are up there, it won't affect you. But when the war started, even chief judges were at, at, at I mean, uh, um, rehabilitation camp, refugee camp. So if, most of these leaders, if they don't sit down and think that they need to begin to do the right thing, when it happens, mm. I sorry. Isn't democracy the government of the people by the people for the people. That's what it should be. So at what point did we abdicate our responsibilities as a people? And at what point did we give the power within this democracy, of this democracy, 
to the people we have voted. You asked a question in your, in your um, Advocacy, article. Yeah. How do we vote the right people in? We, the people. Because it looks like the people we are electing have the power to be elected and not be elected. And even when you elect them, they have the power to go to the Supreme yeah. Court and the Supreme Court will say, mm -hmm. you are not the one again a day to the inauguration. Mm. Mm. I'm pretty sure Seydou can answer yes. you on that because yeah. Seydou has a problem with the Constitution. And to be honest, Absolutely. I actually agree uh, that it started no. from the Constitution. The Constitution is not we, the people, as mm. we have it as today. It it's not we, the people, that promulgate. That Constitution is not us. It has us. nothing to do with It's something that was foisted on us. But we've had so the Constitution not, <laughs> We have constitutional And they crisis, didn't change anything, did they? What, how many, it, it's, uh, it's still, those conferences mm. are not... The way a proper constitution should be uh, constituted, you should have people voted by. So, so what would you want not, to see not amended? You nominating people. No, what would you want to see we amended have to decide, in the we constitution? Have to yes. So, is that the a constitutional con thing? No, I'm telling you. See, thing. the constitution. Why the I think the constitution is very important is because the constitution will determine the kind of leadership, how we want to be ruled, le, le, the le, kind le, of leaders, we, and how the leaders we produced, okay. Okay. all of this okay. things. Okay. Do no, we no, even no have way. goals no way. as a people? No way, that's what I'm saying. That's, you see, that's where the problem is. We don't the have people, goals. Now, every year we amend the constitution, we say, American constitution is like a pamphlet, you know? Your, all the set of rules and laws cannot be contained in one document. You know, I tend to agree with Libras on this. And, it's and not so, the we find out that we, the during the election, it is not the constitution that says You're looking for right that people you to must apply right collect 200 or 2,000 naira to sell your vote to somebody. Mm, it's a human being. In our polling unit, we came out and said that day we, we called it, we called it um, <laughs> um, votes, votes and flanger. Mm. So I coordinated, I ensured that, you know, all the people, the rich men, we went, you know, they came out, we collected monies from them and said, we'll buy drinks here, we'll buy food. Yeah, but the thing whether, is... Wait, quickly, whether you are a poor man, whether you are a rich man, so. let us all come together and vote, ensure that these votes are protected. So it was about voting. And yeah. nobody would come here and say, I want to give you 2,000 naira. How many of us did that? at our various levels. Okay, Nobody okay, will bother me, voting. Uh, sorry, and then you sit down and complain. I have to round up. Soon. No, no, bear with me. Let me just make this point because I haven't still thrown mm. my two penny or my two kobo inside. Okay, um, you, it was fascinating when you sort of said, oh, every time they'll come and throw out a statement, uh, something as empty as what, what yeah, one of the no And even today, I heard on the news, he yeah. says, deal with these people mercilessly. Mm. So somebody has the question before, Uncle, what, were they dealing with them mercifully? Mm. So the point is, I feel government governance is a partnership. Mm. You need to hold them accountable. I know we keep using that word and it sounds like it's a cliche, but even at the local level, you say, okay, you said that you'll do this. You haven't done it. You give them figures. Because that's the only way, dealing with what we have already. Mm -hmm. Going forward, you can now start saying how we push the right people with conscience mm -hmm. to the fore. But right now, what you have on the ground are people you need to hold yeah. accountable. No, I agree. But I'm not, I, I, I want to speak get for voted, here, And actually. then the life of the people who voted in means nothing yeah. to them. But I do think that our constitution does uh, confer certain powers yeah. that prevent some people from, you know, facing holding prosecution of, of, yes, or from us uh, holding them accountable. But well, you need the right so, people to then No, fair enough. So in order to turn okay, it. This is all where right. Well, came first, the chicken there you the go. <laughs> Sometimes we ask the question to provoke some sober reflection. Here's where we look forward to reflecting on your observations on our advocacies. On Nigeria for Sale, Niger Loop Videos says, the only way, what happened to sideways? Anyways, fair enough, it's your opinion. Nigeria is for sale, for real. Niger Loop, I know you appreciate that the only way is up is an expression of optimism. We keep looking up in the midst of our challenges. On does Nigeria need a multi-party system? Fetch <laughs> says, it's a shame that no one here is debating on people's comments. Not sure what you mean, Fetch. <laughs> anyway, we just read out your comments, so feel free to follow up on this. On the Megacity Part 3, Urban Development, Comrade RSA Incorruptible says, Megacities are well planned and standardized, not a dumping ground for all comers like Lagos. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook. Plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG. 
or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Treasure may be cracking open Pandora's box as she explores the causal elements behind the rising spate of husband killings. You may need to sit back for this one. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.